acknowledges that she wants to do so. Not by acknowledging God's standard, but by acknowledging her own. Once again, this is reminiscent of what I call the expert class, the social engineers of our day, who have been at this for a very long time, seeking to build a kind of heaven on earth, but what they call a heaven on earth, because, because they don't believe in God, they necessarily don't believe in heaven, because they don't believe in heaven, they believe that when they die, America, you are killing black America in the classroom by making sure we do not get a proper education. You're killing us in the courtroom by making sure we do not have equal justice. You're killing us in the boardroom by making sure that we do not get real economic inclusion. And you're killing us in the hospital room by making sure that we do not have proper health care. And you're doing all of this long before you kill us in the streets. One of the reasons I spend so much time debunking historical narratives is one, because the truth needs to be told. And two, a lot of academicians and celebrities and activists and politicians use these false narratives time and again to push for policies that are socialist, that are Marxist, on their quest to globalism, because that is ultimately what their agenda is. Everyone can benefit from the riches of America. And when we do that, we are one in this global society. One of the things that we hear time and again is that you know blacks can't be racist because they don't have power. Only powerful people can be oppressive or discriminatory, and therefore blacks, because they lack power, are not racist. Uh, that couldn't be any further from the truth. For one, when you look at the so-called black leaders who constantly insist that blacks are victims, there is power in victimhood because you can use that victimhood status to bludgeon your political adversaries. The angry black man, the angry black man, let's stay on topic, it's the please. southern strategy in the let's north. Let's stay on topic. And they we expect us to be now. quiet about it. We're not going to be quiet about it. There is power in victimhood. There is power in fragility. Take, for example, the climate change agenda. For a very long time, Bill Nye has been advocating for legislation to combat climate change. What Bill Nye just did was waste everyone's time explaining that CO2 is rising. To the spectator and the apolitical types who are watching this climate debate go on, they don't necessarily have anything negative to say against a skeptic who would challenge Bill Nye because Bill Nye is an older white man. I got to disagree with you. Maybe you can engage in a merit-based, fact-based debate without the spectators being distracted by identity. On the other hand, children are generally seen as innocent and fragile. In comes Greta Thunberg. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? This is the reason why the globalists have invested so much time, energy, money, strategy into not only Greta Thunberg, but the youth in general because they understand how off-putting it is to the spectator for grown adults to argue with children over climate change. Plenty of eyebrows have been raised after President Donald Trump took yet another swipe at the teenaged climate activists. They're saying, look at this little girl, she's crazy, or she's mentally ill, right? And then we can focus on that quote unquote little girl instead of the problem at hand, which is that the house is on fire. You this called her parents, mentally ill. Mental Ill. Take it back Ill now. You depression. are despicable. You, you, you're doing well, but you're a mean, mad white man. <laughs> on Jordan's point about how does he in a sense, get an equal voice in this debate back if it is implied that his participation brings with it this baggage of white privilege that doesn't allow him to see clearly the issues that are before us. Well, I don't think Jordan Peterson is suffering from anything except an exaggerated sense of entitlement and resentment and his own privilege is invisible to him and it's manifest with lethal intensity and ferocity right here on stage. And so when it comes to race and politics in America, you can always rely on social activists to exploit people's ignorance of history in order to constantly push Marxist and socialist policies in their quest toward globalism. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bringing up to the starting line of a race and then say, you are free to compete with all the others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. The race is inherently unfair. 
there was an obligation for anyone to be fair to give the man who had been in chains some assistance so that he could run a better race. It is not enough just to open the gates of opportunity. All our citizens must have the ability to walk through those gates. And this is the next and the more profound stage of the battle for civil rights.